Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, NPTEL course on an introduction to machine learning. Uh, in this course, uh, we will have a, a, a quick introduction to machine learning and um, this will not be very deep in a, in a mathematical sense, but uh, it will have some amount of mathematical rigor. And what we will be doing in this course is uh, uh, covering uh, different paradigms of machine learning and with uh, special emphasis on uh, classification and regression tasks and also we will introduce you to uh, various other uh, machine learning paradigms. Okay. Um, in this uh, introductory lecture, uh, set of lectures, I will uh, uh, give a very quick overview of the different kinds of machine learning paradigms and therefore I call this uh, uh, lectures uh, machine learning a brief introduction. Uh, uh, with the emphasis on brief, right. So, the rest of the course uh, would be a more uh, uh, elongated introduction to uh, <coughs> uh, machine learning, right. Uh, so, what is machine learning? So, I will start off with uh, uh, a canonical definition put out by Tom Mitchell uh, in 97. Uh, uh, and so, a machine or an agent, uh, I deliberately leave the beginning uh, undefined because you could also apply this to uh, non machines like uh, biological agents. So, an agent is set to learn from experience with respect to some class of tasks right under performance measure p if the learner's performance at tasks in the class as measured by p improves with experience. So, what, what we get from this the first thing is we have to define learning with respect to a specific class of tasks right. It could be answering exams in a particular subject right or it could be uh, diagnosing uh, 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 patients of a specific illness right. So, but we have to be very careful about defining the set of tasks on which we are going to define this learning right. And the second thing we need is kind of a performance measure P right. So, in the absence of a performance measure P you would start uh, make vague statement like oh I think something is happening right that seems to be a change and something learned uh, there is some learning going on and stuff like that. So, if you want to be more clear about measuring whether learning is happening or not you first need to define some kind of a performance criteria right. So, for example, uh, if you talk about uh, answering questions in an exam uh, your performance criterion could very well be the number of marks that you get. Or if you talk about uh, uh, diagnosing illness, then the, uh, then your performance measure would be the number of patients that uh, you save or the number of uh, patients who did not have adverse reaction to the drugs you gave them. There could be a variety of uh, ways of defining performance measures depending on what you are looking for, right. And the third important component here is experience, right. So, with experience, the performance has to improve, right. And so, what we mean by experience here in the case of writing exams, it could be writing more exams right. So, the more the number of exams you write, the better you write it, uh, better you get at test taking or it could be uh, patients in the case of uh, diagnosing illnesses right. The more patients that you look at, uh, the better you become uh, at, uh, at diagnosing illness right. So, so, these are the three components. So, you need a class of tasks, you need a performance measure and you need some well defined experience. So, this kind of learning right where you are learning to improve your performance based on experience is known as a this kind of learning where you are trying to uh, where you learn to improve your performance with experience is known as inductive learning right. And, and the uh, basis of inductive learning goes back uh, um, several uh, centuries people have been debating about inductive learning uh, for uh, hundreds of years now and uh, it is only more recently uh, we have uh, started to have uh, more quantified mechanisms of uh, learning right. So, but one thing uh, I, I always point out to people is that you should take this definition with a pinch of salt. Uh, so, for example, uh, you could uh, think about um, uh, the, uh, the, the task as uh, fitting your foot comfortably right. So, you could talk about uh, whether uh, a slipper uh, fits your foot uh, comfortably or, or, or uh, let me. So, I always say that you should take this uh, definition with a pinch of salt uh, because uh, uh, let us take the example of a slipper you know. Uh, 
So, the slipper is uh, supposed to give uh, protection to your foot right and uh, a performance measure for the slipper would be whether it is fitting the leg comfortably or not or whether it is uh, you know as people say it, whether it is biting your uh, leg or is it chaffing your feet right. And uh, with experience you know as, as the slipper knows more and more about your foot as you keep wearing the slipper for longer periods of time it becomes better at the task of fitting your foot right as measured by whether it is chaffing your foot or whether it is biting your foot or not right. So, would you say that uh, the slipper is uh, learned to fit your uh, foot? Well, by this definition yes right. So, you have to take this with a pinch of salt and uh, so not uh, uh, every uh, system that uh, conforms to this definition uh, of learning uh, can be set to learn usually ok. So, going on so there are different uh, machine learning paradigms that we will talk about and uh, the first one uh, is uh, supervised learning where uh, you learn an input uh, uh, to output map right. So, you are given some kind of an input it could be uh, a description of the patient who comes to uh, comes to the clinic and the output that you have to produce is whether the patient has a certain disease or not right. So, this they have to learn this kind of an input to output map or the input could be some kind of a question right and then the output would be the answer to the question or it could be a true or false question I give you a description of the question you have to give me true or false as the output. And in supervised learning what you essentially do is learn a mapping from these inputs to the required output right. If the output that you are looking for happens to be a categorical output like whether he has a disease or does not have a disease or whether the answer is true or false then the supervised learning problem is called a classification problem right. And if the output happens to be a continuous value like uh, so how long will this product last before it fails right or uh, what is the expected rainfall tomorrow right. So, these kinds of problems uh, they would be called as uh, regression problems right. So, this, these are supervised learning problems where the output is, uh, uh, is a continuous value and these are called as regression problems. Right. So, we will look at in more detail classification and regression as we go on right. So, the second class of problems are known as unsupervised learning problems right where the goal is not really to produce an output in response to an input, but given a set of in data right we have to discover patterns in the data right. So, that is more of uh, uh, that that is called unsupervised learning there is no real desired output that we are looking for right we are more interested in finding patterns in the data. So, clustering right is one uh, uh, task uh, one unsupervised learning task where you are interested in finding cohesive groups among the input pattern right. For example, I might be looking at uh, customers who come to my shop right and I want to figure out if there are categories of customers like so maybe college students could be one category and uh, so young IT professionals could be another category and so on and so forth. And I mean when I am looking at this kinds of uh, grouping in my data. So, I would call that as a clustering task right. So, the other uh, popular unsupervised learning uh, paradigm is known as uh, association rule mining or frequent pattern mining uh, where uh, you are interested in finding a frequent uh, co-occurrence of uh, items right in, in, in the data that is given to you. So, whenever A comes to my shop B also comes to my shop right. So, those kinds of uh, co-occurrence. So, I can always say that ok if I see A then that is likely very likely that B is also in my shop somewhere you know. So, so I can learn this kinds of associations between data right and again we will look at this uh, later in uh, more detail and uh, these are I mean there are many different variants on supervised and unsupervised learning, but these are the main uh, ones uh, that we will look at. So, the third form of uh, learning which is called reinforcement learning uh, it is neither supervised nor unsupervised in nature and uh, typically these are uh, problems where you are learning to control the behavior of a system and I will give you more intuition into reinforcement learning uh, in, in one of the uh, later modules. So, like I said earlier so for every task right so you need to have some kind of a performance measure. So, if you are looking at classification the performance measure is going to be classification error. So, typically right so we will talk about many many different performance measures uh, in, the, uh, in the duration of this course, but the typical performance measure you would want to use is classification error right. So, how many of the uh, items or how many of the patients did I get incorrect. So, how many of them who are not having the disease did I predict had the disease and how many of them that had the disease that I missed right. So, that would be one of the measures that I would use and that would be the measure that we want to use, but we will see later that uh, uh, often that is not uh, 
it is not possible uh, to actually uh, learn directly with respect to this measure. So, we use other forms right? and likewise for regression again. Uh, so, we have the, uh, the prediction error suppose I say it is going to rain uh, like 23 millimeters and then it ends up raining like uh, 49 centimeters I do not know. So, that is a huge, uh, uh, huge prediction error right and uh, in, in terms of clustering. Uh, so, this is a little becomes a little trickier uh, to define uh, performance measures. We do not know what is a good uh, clustering uh, algorithm because we do not know what how to measure the quality of clusters. So, people come up with all uh, different kinds of measures and uh, so one of the more popular ones is a scatter or spread of the cluster that essentially tells you how, uh, how spread out the points are that belong to a single group. If you remember, we are supposed to find cohesive groups. So, if the group is not that cohesive, it is not all of them are not together, then you would say the clustering is of a poorer quality, right. And if you have other ways of uh, measuring uh, things, like, uh, like I was telling you, um, so if you know that people are college students, right, and then you can figure out that how many, what fraction of your cluster uh, are college students. So, you can uh, do these kinds of external evaluations. So, one measure that people use popularly there is known as purity. Right. And in association rule mining, we use a variety of measures called support and confidence that takes a little bit of work to explain support and confidence. So, I will uh, defer it until I talk about uh, association rules in, uh, uh, in detail. And in, uh, in the more in the reinforcement learning task, so if you remember I told you it is uh, learning to control. So, you are going to have a cost for controlling the system and the, so the measure here is cost and you would like to minimize the cost that you are going to accrue while controlling the system. So, these are the basic machine learning tasks. So, there are several challenges when you are trying to build a uh, build a machine learning solution, right. So, a, a few of these I have listed on this slide, right. The first one is you have to think about how good is a model that you have learned, right. So, I talked about a few measures on the previous slide, uh, but uh, often uh, those are not sufficient. There are other practical considerations that come into play and we will look at some of these uh, towards the uh, uh, towards the middle of the course somewhere, right. And uh, the bulk of the time would be spent on uh, answering the second question, which is how do I choose a model, right. So, given some kind of uh, data, which will be the experience that we are talking about. So, given this experience, how, how would I choose, how would I choose a model, right, that somehow learns what I want to do, right. So, how that improves itself with experience and so on. So, forth. how do I choose this model and how do I actually find the parameters of the model that gives me the right answer, right. Uh, so, this is what we will spend much of our time on in this course. And then there are a whole bunch of other things that you really have to answer to be able to build uh, useful uh, machine learning, useful uh, data analytics or data mining solutions. Questions like do I have enough data, do I have enough experience uh, to say that uh, my model is good, right. Is the data, is, is it of sufficient quality, there could be errors in the data, right. Uh, suppose I have medical data and age is recorded as 225. So, what does that mean? It could be 225 days in which case it is a, a reasonable number. It could be 22.5 years which again is a reasonable number or 22.5 months is reasonable. But if it is 225 years, it is not a reasonable number. So, there is something wrong in the data, right. So, how, how do you handle these things or noise in images, right or missing values. So, I will talk briefly about handling uh, missing values uh, later in the course, uh, but uh, this is as I mentioned in the beginning is a machine learning course, right and uh, this is not, uh, uh, this not primarily, it is it's primarily concerned about the algorithms of machine learning and the, and the math and the intuition behind those and uh, not necessarily about uh, uh, the questions of building a practical systems based on this. So, I will be talking about many of these issues during the course, uh, but uh, just that I want to reiterate that will not be the focus, right. And uh, so, the next uh, I, the challenge I have listed here is how confident can I be of the results and uh, about that I certainly will talk a little bit because uh, the whole uh, uh, premise of reporting machine learning results uh, um, uh, depends on uh, how confident you can be of the results, right. And the last question, uh, am I describing the data correctly, okay. So, that is a very, very um, domain dependent and, uh, uh, and, and, and a question that you can answer only with uh, your experience as a machine learning or a data, data sciences uh, professional or with, with, with time. Right. So, but there are typical questions um, 
that you would like to ask that are there on the slides. Um, so, from the next in the next module, we will look at uh, uh, the different learning paradigms in uh, in uh, uh, slightly more detail.